God is fair. God is just. God is loving. But do those words really mean what you think they mean? God is often described using a handful of adjectives, but it seems to me that many of these adjectives, such as fair, just, and loving, don't actually describe the character, or the actions, of the God that many Christians claim to believe in. It seems to me that, very often, the God of the Bible simply does not reflect the colloquial definitions of these words. This was made especially clear to me in a sermon by a pastor named John MacArthur, where he talked about hell and the fate of the unevangelized, and it's in this specific context that I'd like to explore the meanings of the words fair, just, and loving. Unbelievers who never heard the gospel will be saved because they aren't responsible for their situation. They'll be saved. The problem with that is you can't get saved unless you believe in Christ. There's no salvation in any other name than the name of Jesus Christ. This is certainly a view that many Christians hold to. No one comes to the Father but through me. But on this particular topic of going to hell because you never heard of Jesus, is this fair? Is this just? Is this really the kind of system we're describing when we use those words in regular conversation? It seems to me that allowing people to go to hell because they didn't know about Jesus would be kind of like if the government decided to levy a new tax against us with insanely high penalties for late payments, but they didn't tell us about it. And then, years later, they came to collect the massive amounts of interest owed. If the government did that to us, we'd call it unfair and downright evil, even though we agree, most of us anyway, that the government does have the right to levy taxes. But when God does roughly the same thing, withholding information from people such that they will never be able to repay their debts, we're told that this is fair? And that God is just? How does that make any sense? Now, to be clear, you are perfectly free to redefine words like fair and just in ways that better fit with God's actions. They're just words. I mean, you could even redefine these words in direct reference to God's actions if you wanted to, so that whatever God does, that is, by definition, fair and just. But in order for people to understand you, you would have to explain that this is what you're doing. And, in my experience, almost no one actually does this. They simply declare that God is fair and God is just, even as he's allowing the unevangelized to go to hell. I'm sorry, but this is clearly not fair or just. So, why even use those words in the first place? Why not use words that more closely match the situation you're describing? For example, if you wanted to condemn the actions of a child molester, why would you describe the child molester's actions as righteous, with the caveat that your definition of the word is radically different from what it normally means? Why even use the word righteous in the first place? If you went on to insist that the word righteous is compatible with, or even defined as, molesting children for fun, you'd get a lot of suspicious looks, and I think people would rightly question your motives. No one would really describe a child molester's actions as righteous, so it's kind of weird that you would insist on using that word. In the same way, no one would describe levying a secret tax as a fair action for the government to take. And if someone rushed to the government's defense, arguing that this action is fair by definition, we'd instantly recognize that person as a brainwashed sycophant. In the exact same way, when it comes to God's system, wherein the unevangelized go to hell, I think it's pretty clear that this is not a fair system, at least not in any recognizable way that we normally use the word. When Christians insist that having the unevangelized go to hell is fair, and that God is just, it sounds like they simply want to hold on to the words themselves, regardless of what those words actually end up meaning. Whatever the word fair has to mean to be compatible with God, that's what it means, because God is fair. You don't understand. I was always told that Mr. Watterson was a righteous man. So you know what? If he molested those children, then that's what righteous means to me. We must hang on to the word, regardless of what it ends up meaning. The same problem arises when we examine the idea that God is loving. If God really is loving, then why would he withhold revelation of Jesus from otherwise ignorant people? Or, if revelation just isn't in the cards for some reason, 
then why wouldn't God simply annihilate the souls of those hellbound people instead of having them suffer eternally? That would seem to be the loving thing to do, wouldn't it? If my child, who I love, was about to walk into traffic, I would at least reveal the imminent danger to them through a verbal warning. But apparently God doesn't even do this. And if my child continued to walk into traffic despite my verbal warning, I would not hesitate to physically intervene, and I would have no qualms about violating my child's free will or forcing him to obey me as I pulled him to safety. I mean, this is what a loving parent would do, at least by our commonly understood definition of the word loving. Whereas if I had simply thought to myself, well, really gonna miss him, sucks to suck, people would not hesitate to call me a callous, detached, and even psychopathic parent. But when it comes to God and hell, where God doesn't provide some of his children with a warning, and where God then decides to not prevent their suffering in lieu of said warning, we're told that somehow that's the behavior of a God who loves us? Really? Does that really sound like something a loving parent figure would do? Frankly, it seems borderline dishonest to describe such a God using words like fair or just or loving. A God who allows the unevangelized to go to hell is clearly not fair or just or loving. He's something entirely different. Now, of course, as I said, you could just redefine these words to fit God's actions, but then it just sounds, once again, like your only goal is to preserve the words themselves, regardless of what they actually end up meaning. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.